You may not know the answer to this, but do you think that Blackbeard is your uncle? <laughs> the first ever North American One Piece National Championship is over, and I didn't top. But I accomplished my goal. My goal was to beat every Akainu and Avenge Ace and every Sakazuki I played, I beat their butts right into their throats. So I'm happy about that. I dropped a couple games to NL. I got back to back to back in NL. There were a couple repairs. The event started a little late. I'm gonna reserve all of my commentary about the event itself if you wanna read about it. Very easy to find online. Um, needless to say, there were some issues, but I had a lot of fun. I saw a lot of people that I like and missed. And that's what these events are really about, is getting together with people that you like and having a good time. And I did that. And I got to kick a little bit of butt with my deck. Not as much as I would have liked to, but I got to kick some. Anyway, I wanted to show off the deck. This is it, I've been saving. I've been working on this really hard for months. Actually, like since before the game came out, I've been playing this deck. So I'm glad that I took this to nationals and not something that everybody else was playing, but I stuck to my guns and played my heart and soul out. I played an all gold Dawn deck with the one Yamato, my 666 Serial Luffy, which I got specifically to play at nationals. And then just going into the deck, I played four Namis. I feel like Nami is, you kind of got to play this card, Searcher. I played the one from the new uh, set and then the three pre erratas And then I played four Robins. Robins also a really good card. Um, really good against Sakazuki actually. If you don't see a Jambe or you don't have a Luffy on board and they play Rebecca, you just pop the Rebecca with Robin. Also like Brulee's out of life, she deals with those. So really good and she can also become a swing with Makino, which we'll get to. Otama, I said this when the game came out. I said this was like the most value printed on a card, and I think people have agreed over time that this is an extremely value card. One cost, 2K counter, minus 2,000 power on play. Um, just such a useful, useful card. You know, getting rid of bodies is so important. So being able to lower the power to swing into something with more of your board is a very useful uh, thing to do. So I think there's a lot of utility with Otama and um, most of the time it's just a 2k counter but I played the three judges and the one 2023 online participant that I got from a friend um, and then for Makino is Makino is a crazy card because Makino just makes any of these cards a viable swing so even if you don't have something to swing with if they don't get rid of your one drops you just play Makino rest her and then it's a 5k swing you can also rest her, put two Dawn on, make it 7K. I mean, there's a lot of stuff you can do with this. And if not, it's a 2K counter. So those 2K counters are good. And then I played four Sanjis. Sanji, uh, I got greedy one game and I played a Sanji against an Anel on turn my turn two, which I was four Dawn, they were going to five. And I just completely forgot that Gadatsu was a card because I was playing bad and I was rushing. And I just lost a 2K counter for absolutely no reason. Just gave them value out of playing their Gadatsu. So, I feel like you gotta be really careful playing this guy and you're also gonna be taking life when you swing with him. So there's specific times when you want to play it. But if you are playing it and taking life and swinging it, they're gonna have to swing into that. So they're likely gonna have one less swing at your life, but he's gonna get killed because he's only a 3K. But a searchable 2K counter, which is very good. And then for my rush cards, I played two of the starter deck Sanji. The reason why is, I mean, if I could play six Zoros, I would have played six. This card is basically Zoro, just easier to kill. Zoro's 5K base, this is 4K base, and they're both doing the same thing. Zoro takes three cards and he has Rush. Sanji takes four cards and he has Rush, but it's essentially three cards because in Luffy, you just use the Luffy skill, take the rested Dawn and put it on Sanji. So they're both gonna be like 6K swings with the rested Dawn. But Zoro's definitely better because he's a body that's a little harder to, to remove. Sanji's easier to remove. So getting that turn to rush, I think, is really important in this deck. And having six targets for that makes it a lot more possible. Um, and then I played Luffy, my boy. This is my favorite card in the game. I, this is my favorite art of this card in the game, but I had to play the other arts because they look good. The only thing is if you search this card and you show them what you search, you should always play the one that you showed that you searched first so they don't know that you have another one in your hand. So that's something worthwhile remembering. Uh, of course, I had to play the one Oda art. My boy Brandon sold this to me when the set came out because I did not pull an English one, but I needed one in my deck. So I was happy to play one of these. And then I have the two super pre-release because this is my favorite art and the one in poster just because I had to play the other shiny one. 
So this card's crazy. And a lot of times, actually, I won't play this on curve. I'll extend my curve where I'll play a Nami turn one. I'll swing with the Nami on turn two. So I'll swing five with leader, five with Nami. And then on turn three, I'll play either the Zoro or the Sanji so I can swing seven, seven. And then the turn after that, I'll play Luffy because Luffy's attack then becomes unblockable because you have enough Dawn to put it on to make it unblockable. Unless I don't have a Luffy or unless I don't have one of those other cards in hand, then I'll play on curve if I have these on curve. But I'll usually extend my curve one turn to play the cards to swing bigger with the rush cards. Because especially if I'm playing into yellow on turn uh, four or turn five or turn five, I want to play Whitebeard uh, against yellow specifically. Against Sakazuki, this card is, you don't play this card. This card is just bad. So I just, I would trash this off of something or just not play it. Um, but my boy Ant sold me this uh, this one uh, treasure cup winner championship white beard, which is pretty cool. And then I have this alt art nightmare white beard and then the Oya G, this is actually my favorite art, but um, I like to diversify. So I had played those four white beards. That was really for Anel. And then I played the one winner Luffy just cause I had to, this card is hot. See, he got in there sometimes, sometimes he's really good. A lot of times I don't play him, but he's a bigger body and nice to stick some bigger bodies on board. Um, I like the art a lot and I just had one, so I decided to play one. For my events, I played three Bad Manners Kick Course. This card is really good, especially when you have a lot of dead cards in hand because it gives, makes the other cards into counter power basically, and the trigger is good. So a lot of times, if you don't have enough cards in hand to discard and you trigger this off life, you can just save your life. And with this deck, usually, the turn you're gonna die, the next turn you're gonna win. And if not, then there's no way you're gonna win that game anyway. So this can really get in there to save that. Um, and then of course, four Radical Beams, this card's insane. I've been saying it since the game came out. One cost for 4K power is wild. And you wanna go down to two anyway. You know, you want those cards in your life. Um, so getting in range to use this, I think is something that I'll always do pretty quickly. And then just getting 4K value out of one Dawn is wild. For Jambe, this is just, this is a hot card, you know, makes the attack unblockable. There's so many blockers in the meta right now. Um, and what I really like about this is, you know, I'll swing with my Luffy and leave three Dawn open. And I just swung nine and they're thinking, okay, there's no way that he can swing more than eight or whatever, because I probably used Arrested Dawn on Luffy. And then that's when the real spice comes in as you throw that fiery doll on there. And this is probably why I didn't win more because one of them is not super pre-release. It didn't come in in time. So my deck wasn't totally blinged out, but you throw a fiery doll and a Jambe on there and then you're swinging for 9K unblockable out of nowhere. Or if they just are at zero life and you have two of these in hand, you know, you're swinging for like 17 or something ridiculous. You can you can get really big lethal swing with a couple fiery dolls and a jambe. If there is zero life, there's literally nothing they can do about it. So I love this card. This was the ace in my deck. My goal was to avenge Ace's death, and it felt good to carry Ace with me. I also rock my ace sleeves by HZ19. Um, and HZ19 I, and I actually were working on, if I did well with this deck, we were gonna make a full manga proxy version of it, which brings me to my next thing from Kaizoku Cards. I've been doing manga proxy cards. For cards that are a little pricier, if you wanna pick them up and get a playset that look a lot cooler than the other cards that are out there, you can uh, go to kaizokucards.com and pick up a playset of these. It's buy three, get one free. So you can get a playset for 45 bucks. I think one of these cards normally costs $40 and I think these are like 60 bucks or something crazy like that. So cards that are a little more expensive, we're gonna start working on some manga proxy versions of them. We do have so far of this deck, just these three cards. Over time, we might make more and I'm gonna keep collecting them and I might release a manga version of this deck. If that's something you guys would be interested, let me know. Um, and I also just wanna show some of the other cool cards that are coming out. I got this uh, Yamato, this is gonna be the eternal Yamato actually, it's a double-sided Yamato. So when you do your leader effect and you add the two rested Dawn, you can flip your leader over. Um, so I'm pretty excited about this. It's gonna be a little more expensive than a regular eternal card because it has two sides, but it's not gonna be crazy. Um, so look out for that. And then the other exciting art I have is Reiju. I'm really psyched for Reiju. This is the Reiju art that I am working on. And there's a lot of other really cool, exciting stuff coming to Kaizoku Cards. So check out kaizokucards.com. 
This video was sponsored by me and Kaizoku Cards. But I also gotta do a plug here for Arcane Fortress. I don't know if you guys have heard of Arcane Fortress, but Arcane Fortress hit me up. They make deck boxes, um, they're pretty sick. This is uh, a deck box I thought Fresky B would like and she loves it and she uses it. So it's really nice you get some deck separators in here. They have this cool art inside, it's nice and smooth. It's like a matte smooth thing. And then on the side here, they have this little container that you can put dice in, which is really nice. So you stick your dice in there. This is all magnet and it closes with a magnet. So really nice art. It's a nice size deck box also. Feels good, good quality. I would, I will recommend this. I am recommending it. I'm pretty specific and particular about the things that I recommend because I don't actually need any sponsors at all. But I like it and I do like the playmat also. They, they sent me this playmat. Um, which I think the art on it is really sick. The printing quality is great. I'm not, personally, I'm not like a rubber play mat guy. I like cloth a lot better than rubber, but Fresky B loves it. So your, your, uh, your partner in crime might love it also. Um, so, you know, think about picking one up there. Uh, Arcane Fortress, I'll put the link in the description below. I believe I have an affiliate link. I, I think I set it up. I'll put that information in the description as well. So if you want to support this cool company making cool stuff, check out Arcane Fortress for your deck box and playmat needs. The art is really cool. It's unique and it's vibrant. And I think they do a really great job. So check them out. I'm happy with the stuff that I got to look at my favorite person in the world use all the time. Things are coming by, I'm a dentist, I can't end without a dental tooth tip. My dental tooth tip would be, I say this one a lot, but I expect people are gonna be watching this video because it's gonna say Nats, whatever in the profile and everybody wants to hear about what happened at Nats. Brush with a powered brush. Sonicare Protective Clean, 7100. That's the one that I recommend. Get yourself a powered brush and floss, use a flossing stick. It makes it a lot easier. The Listerine Ultra Clean Flosser makes flossing just so much easier. And if you just make that investment in your teeth, it's gonna save you so, 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 so much money. So you can spend it all on Kaizoku cards and One Piece trading cards because they're so expensive. Why spend the money on your teeth when you could just have them for free if you just take care of them and then you can buy shiny cardboard with the money that you saved on that. See y'all in the next one. This is what boys look like in the boys' dimension. They're boys' dimension. Boys, boys dimension. In the boys' dimension. I like it. Dude, I like this. Like play on words. I play with words. It's hot. It's provocative. Let's see what we're going. It's hot. Dude, I look so tired, bro. <laughs> My 